It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Hey. Big, right. shit. Big, yeah, big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, my all going. Man, hey man, we got a special guest in here today, man. We we actually up here in Vegas, man. We bumping into Jules, man. This guy's up here, man. These guys getting it too, man. So Boss Talk One Hundred and One, we pulled up on the scene, man. We got some guys just ready, man, ready to interview. Uh, been putting in work for a long time. You done seen him with everybody, man. Yes, hey, yes. what my guy here now, man? Kid Earl in the building. What's going on, baby? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You dig seventeen shit slime. Uh, first off, I want to you know shout out to Melvin Farmer for hey. this opportunity to getting me on a uh, Boss. Talk, you feel me? It's lit. I'm on the anchor monitor. I'm over here scared of shit, thinking I'm about to go to jail. For real, I'm not, I'm not even supposed to be in no casinos. Hey. Lucky, you feel me? If I go to jail, I mean, I get out in like two days. Oh man, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get it, man. But you, you, you didn't. You had waves already in the day. Just talk about. Let's talk about first of all, Kidder. Who is Kidder? Mm -hmm. Like, like who? How, how, the, I'm talking about where you're from. You know, all that spiel, who man. Who was Kidder before Kidder? Oh, you go all the way back mm -hmm. yeah so like i'm originally from south carolina okay you feel okay. me uh myrtle beach my hometown then moved to florida you know for a little bit and then my mom had work so i came out here so before the earl ever came and the kid earl i was just like a regular just like person in eighth grade getting bullied so straight a student Nah. <laughs> nah. Hell. <laughs> I be like, damn, like, people didn't like me. I was born in the South, you feel me? Why they didn't like you? What's up? Not a popular kid because what? I was the only black kid in school back in 2011, oh. 2012. And the part is Racially? City. Yeah. Okay. So they made me sit by myself. So to the point after that, I moved out here. And then my step aunt brother is Frank Ocean. Mm. So okay. that's when I started, like, linking up with Tyler, the creator. Mm-hmm. And then niggas start be like, bro, you look like Earl Sweatshirt. And then everybody start calling me Earl Jr., you mm -hmm. feel me? Because I was the second Earl Sweatshirt, but Earl Jr. So that's where I got, you know, Earl from because I used to skate. I never did rapping, none of that. I was like, bro, my sister rapped. I was like, I ain't never going to rap. So you only have one sibling, a sister? No, I got uh, How many seven. Siblings? Different mom and dad? Um, Almost, yeah. Almost. Almost everybody, yeah. Me and my older sister, different dads. Uh -huh. My little brother, my two little brothers and my one sister, same dad, and then my other brothers. Same. So were you raised with your mom and dad or just your mom? Just my mom. Just your mom? Yeah, my, my dad. Did he, you know him? Nah, but you know what's crazy? He found me. like. Before oh, he went, found you? He found me before I went to prison. Really? Yeah. How was that like? That shit was weird. I was like, So what? he just walked up to you and said, I'm your dad? No, nah, he had a white boy. <laughs> they were in construction. It was a white dude, right? He hit me up. He hit me up. He was like, um, he was like, hey, I'm friends with your dad. And me growing up and going to a lot of schools, mm -hmm. every person, that, every guy that I went to school with was like, you're a uh, woo, woo woo son? And I was like. You must look like him Why they keep asking. Nah, bro, so many people said they was my dad. It was a incredible. I was like, really? <laughs> I'm like, hell no. Like, you feel me? So, yeah, I actually found my, he found me in, he was supposed to come to one of my shows in Florida because he stayed in Florida. And so, your mama verified that that it really that is your dad. dad. Yeah, she verified that for sure. She was like, yeah, that's your dad. My dad okay. dark as shit. I'm like, bro, I am light-skinned. <laughs> so, your mama must be light-skinned. My then. mama white. Okay, that's why. Yeah, that's like, why. I think I should have came a little darker. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about you going to uh, prison, man. What? What? What did you? What, can you talk about it a little bit? Yeah, I can talk about. So it. So what bit, happened? Oh, man, bro, I live a crazy life. You feel me? Um, so you feel me? They said the most craziest thing is I've been getting harassed. I pressed a lawsuit. Okay. You feel me? And because they always just stalk me, yeah. I got PTSD. I get in police chases and all, and I be beating them. I be yeah. like, "Fuck, bro!" Like, yeah. And um, so like they was kind of mad because I ain't never had a job. You feel me? So um, I was always getting money. It was never like robbing, stealing, or nothing like that. So they was always like, okay, where's this money coming from? So mm -hmm. they started planting charges on me because 
They couldn't figure it out. They couldn't figure it out, and they kept fucking with me. You feel me? So that's why we pressed the lawsuit. After that, bro, they said I robbed nine police officers by wow. myself. Wow. I'm five. Like back in 2019, I was like five six. You feel me? Being in jail, working on this shit, it grew like an inch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> grew like an inch. So I'm like, bro, how am I five six? Robbed nine police officers. That sounds. And, and five like, six, you supposedly robbed is that. That's what they they trumped those yeah, type like, those like, type of charges. What got you sent up? Yeah, like so I beat it, and then um, damn, it's a fucked up story because the nine police officers I didn't do. You feel me? Of course, and that's and that's a fact. Like that's one hundred percent a fact. But. I got on probation for having a police That's badge. a setup, ain't it? You had a police badge? Uh-huh. That's a setup, that probation. Yeah. So <laughs> after being five days being on probation, they motherfucker locked me up. You really? Me? Because yep. you violated probation. But I violated probation for um, my mom's a felon. Okay. You and you, you ain't supposed be to be around, around your mom. Uh-uh. And on top of that, they threw that case that I beat back on me. That yeah. was the first... Then wow. they violated me for like, oh, you got a warrant for your arrest. But when they released you and you're on probation, where did they release you to? Where where did they allow you to go to? They let me go to my mom's house because I was never really staying out here. I was always in L.A. You feel but me? if they have allowed you to go to your mom's house, but knowing that your mom was a felon, how? That's how what that I work? said. Yeah. yeah. That's and a setup. It was a setup. So my mom, the whole time, they was fucking with me. They sent us, they sent us me to 180 days. That's six months. Mm-hmm. They made me do eight months. Called me back. Five days before going home and was like, you know what? We're just going to revoke your probation and send you to prison for two years. I just did eight months. And I'm supposed to be going home in five days. Like My, my, my release date is five days. They like, you know what? We're just going to revoke your probation. And they told everybody to get out the court. Like, they told everybody to get out the court. And then they said that. Wow. I was like, Hold on. wow. The only thing I can think about is like, what kind of lawyer you had? I'm like, so, if you had a really good lawyer. I did. So, um, my first lawyer... She makes the statues for the state. Okay. So, me being in so many cases, because, like, it's, like, I've been through so much. It's, like... Um, at she, such a young age. At a young age. Like, I wish I could just talk more, but I'm still fighting the case. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, so it's, like, shit, I really got to leave out. For sure. And no, and, that, and, that, and that's yeah. understandable. Yeah. We're not, we we only want to hear about, you what know... What you can say. What you can yeah, talk about. Because ain't nobody... Look, ain't nobody trying to do nothing to get... Hell look, no. Enough of us getting in trouble, <laughs> nigga. Enough we ain't trying exactly. to... Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Man. But, exactly. So... Some experiences in in, pri- in prison oh. though, getting stabbed in the stabbed, knee. Getting, what, 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 what was the craziest murdered. thing that happened when you was in there that you seen? That the uh, that, hap- that happened to me was just a stab in the knee. But the shit I seen, I was like, they had me. I couldn't go to camp. I couldn't go nowhere. They had me maximum security. I'm wow. I'm 20 years old at like this time, like 20. Were you fighting in there or something? No. So why they put you in maximum? Yeah, nine. Good. He had nine charge, nine yeah, officers. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. in county. Yeah. I was in county, and police yeah. was really grabbing me by my motherfucking neck and was like, "Oh, you, you robbed the captain. You robbed the owner of El- Las Vegas Metro Police Department. You lucky we won't beat your ass." They used to slit like throw my ass, grab me by my neck, throw me in a uh, horseshoe, push me on the ground, call me a bitch, say like, "Oh yeah, you my little bitch. Don't uh, don't say shit." Like I'm like, damn. They like, yeah, you want to do something? Do something. And I'm just like mm. there because I'm stuck. You feel me? Like if I beat if I take off, I'm getting my ass whipped. I'm not teeth. I can't hit <laughs> Let yeah. me ask you, so so I mean, I know the music. You you heavy in the music. Uh you did a song called First Day Out? No, no, no. Um it was a um a video of just like a little interview okay. with the camera doing. So what 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 is your music thing like? Like let's talk about the music because you done been with like I know Trippy Red, all these different artists. Give us some instances on your music. What drives you like? And who inspired you to That's start? A, yeah, who inspired you? Know, because yeah, let's get you into said the you music. weren't interested in, in at in first the I wasn't interested in the music. Right. One day, this is a crazy story. One and this is like Legit, I'm just in my backyard. There's an artist named King. You feel me? They okay. called him like the young thug look alike dude you feel me yeah i see what well, didn't y'all y'all got some stuff online together uh now nah, we chop it up and yeah shit, you feel me so motherfucker um that day i was like probably like 16 you feel me 17 so my first year i started making like beats and shit. i was like okay that's your hard. and then i looked up to kanye and then i was like man this beat shit hard but i was on one beat for like six months and i'm like bro, <laughs> fuck, no. i'm like bro, i didn't even get the beginning of it so i was like fuck this shit. i quit you feel me? Um, I was like 16 at the time. Stopped doing music till I was like 18, 19. As soon as I started doing music, I already knew what it was. I 
like my first song hit 10k mm. in uh like the week i was like oh yeah i'm about to make it this shit. and that first song you were on there by yourself you didn't do a feature with anybody no nah, no nah, i did a feature with you know low grade low grade ass niggas you feel me okay. because the reason why i say they no disrespect or nothing but like i've really been through some shit like he's not my best friend no more because he did that shit you feel me but He's the one that got me really into the studio. He forced me into the studio. He was like, bro, you're going to record? I'm like, hell no, bro. And him, since I say low ass, he killed my cousin. Like, my best friend killed wow. murdered my cousin. What? And I was just like, damn. You feel me? And then he was stealing from me. Your best friend killed your cousin? Yeah. What was that about? Like, what, I mean, do you know what happened? Um, You know, motherfucking... My cousin was a like a flexor, you feel me? Yeah. Okay. Selling hella lean and all that. You yeah. feel me? I could talk about it now. Yeah, he, he passed he, away. He passed, but he was selling lean and doing all, selling all drugs. So they wanted like 30 pints of lean, you feel me? That's some like good shit. That shit like a band, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So They tried robbing him yeah, and they, they killing him. They killed him, yeah. But he's in jail. They in jail now and shit. And it's kind of funny because like I seen him when I was in county. You did? Yeah. I seen him, but it's like he was already in county for four years. I just seen him, you feel me? And I, uh, he was like, oh, bro, I've been down. He laughing and shit, laughing how he murdered my cousin and shit. But -uh. he don't, like, I don't know if he knows, but I think he knows that was my cousin. Okay. But I was like, damn, you feel me? So, yeah, he got me into music and shit, and I just like that shit. Like, ever since, like, you feel me? Especially my cousin died. I was like, man, I'm just going to keep this shit going because it's just like, Something to do and, and everything you write your own music, right? Of course, I freestyle everything. Oh, you freestyle? Yeah. I'll be feeling like Wayne, but and everything you, you speak about is things that happen to you, or sometimes things that happen to somebody else that you just put it out in your music. See, that's the crazy thing, that's why I can't drop a lot of music. A lot of my because I don't bullshit in my music, I'm not no capper. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I can't cap like capping is like the worst thing to ever do. You feel me? Like, especially lying to yourself, you mm -hmm. feel me. And then me knowing X66 and Tusk, you know, like, I most definitely can't lie to myself. So, like, everything I speak, I do. Like, my mom, I be saying, my mom be listening to hearing my music because my little brother be like, oh, send me that song. I'm like, mm. okay, man. I said it, he played it in the car. My mom would call me that tripping. Like, you're not dropping that shit because <laughs> I'm fighting the case. So, let's talk about, you say, you know, extension. You, you, how, how, do, how do you know him? Um, 2018, this is pretty much like two months, three months before he died. He okay. got in contact on uh, Instagram. You feel me? And y'all started, did y'all meet and everything? Uh, nah, but we talked, you feel me, through FaceTime. Okay. And he always gave me positive vibes, energy, always told me like, you feel me, like tell the haters to suck your dick, bro. Really? Like, you feel me? Like, because at the end of the day, everybody's going to hate him, hate on you. Exactly. And he's like, bro, if people don't hate on you, you're not doing shit. Uh, yeah. So what, that was, the, what was, that was the most inspiring thing that he said to you? Yeah. And and so and that that made you feel like you had to you had to uh, go through. Once he passed away, that had to affect you because you were it, already inspired by it him. It affected right? me because when he told me that he died two days ago, like two days later. Two days later, later yeah. Wow. You feel and me? So, like we always talk, but like that's when I really wanted to do my music shit. I started my music shit in twenty eighteen. Yeah. You feel me? So I was like, yeah. Like, I'm going to do that shit, and that's what he told me. Like, like tell the haters to suck your dick. Wow. And and so you. Being a being a, a young man like like to see how he had to, had went out does that kind of throw you off for as how you move out here? You know, my bad for interrupt. Go ahead, no, but, go ahead. Um, no, it don't throw me off because everybody always see it like I don't know why, but they always like, bro, you look like X to me. Like when I have my hair braided back, X and and that's your cousin. No, no, that X is the one. Oh, oh, okay, got it. and um, you know, ever since that, I'm like, bro. Everybody always say, like, it's like, I don't want to take his shit or nothing because I'm not his style, you feel me? I'm not mm -hmm. his genre. But I would love to keep his legacy alive because when people always say, I look like him for some reason. And then fucking, um, I just be waking up and some days I, I'll have, like, have dreams of him and he'll wake me up. Mm. And was like, no, it's that time. Like, you ready to go up. That's why I'm ready to get off this damn ankle monitor. Like, when they give me all this motherfucker, I'm taking over. And people are scared. People are scared. So, so I mean, when you think about him and what he would have wanted, you know, because you had the conversation with him, um, what do you think that he would have wanted from from you being in the music? He wants you to turn up like he would, right? Yeah, just want me to have fun. 
as always, you feel me? It's just fun because at the end of the day, this is going to keep us out of a lot of shit. You feel me? Keep us out the street. Yeah. Like, most definitely, like, every day, somebody's murdering somebody, woo woo this, woo that. Bro, if I promise that they made it in the music, they would stay up out that street, like, because they got so much shit to lose. And that's what people don't understand. Even when, like, the drill rappers, like, they will rap about that shit and don't care about going to jail, but they don't realize how fast that shit could get taken from you because that shit would get taken from you quick. Don't let it, uh, this would have a lifer told me. Don't let 10 seconds get you like 20 to life. You feel me? Because that's all it takes. You can go run in the gas station right now and go get the money, and you 100% gonna get that money. But the chances you're gonna get caught, and you just got life for holding the nigga at gunpoint. I ain't get some money. No, and that's that shit what, took 10 seconds. That's 100% mm-hmm. correct, man. You got to think before you make these moves out yeah. here, man. Talk about the new album that, that, that what, the Future of Neptune? The Future of Neptune. I actually fuck with that album, you feel me? I, um, You know, shout out my brother-in-law, D-Money, you feel me? Help me with it, you feel me? I just came home from prison. I was like, no, I'm going to do that album. That album took, took me like not even five days, four days to do. And then on top of that, I did... 300 songs in like a week. Mm. Wow. Because I was so hungry being home. Like, nigga, that's what niggas don't understand. Being gone so long, ain't getting no studio, and that rapping through that phone, that shit always cutting off. Bro, when you get home, you hit that studio, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah nigga, and slush it, man. It's like, yeah, you know what the problem is? It's like, yeah, that shit, man, that shit amazing. I just don't want to go back to jail. Yeah, so, so what's your favorite song on that that on that project? Calvin Klein. Calvin Klein. Why? Oh uh, man, my brother, Young Hippie, mm-hmm. amazing. That's my brother. Like that's my dog. That's my day one. You feel me? Because it's just like this song just is just a vibe. Everybody fuck with it. Played it in the club. I can't even go to clubs. I can't go nowhere. I be stuck in the house. My yeah. brother in law and all them. They be at clubs doing this out in L.A., Miami. They be bumping that shit in the club. They FaceTime me like, oh, we wish you was here. I'm like, damn, nigga, you already know if I was, I would have turned up. But, but, that heavy bitch in the club. Let me ask you something. Like, like when you look at, like, Kodak Black just got shot in the leg, like, up in uh, Cali, in Cali, I guess. It's LA. getting to a r- rumbling a little bit like youngsters do. Um, do you think that, that it, it, I mean, is it any way to turn down? Or is it just straight turn up when you young niggas out there? Because, see, I ain't no young nigga. Y'all young, it's so it's turned up. It's turned. <laughs> it's fucking turned up. You feel me? I'm, I'm, that's what I'm saying. How does I'm like? How does that happen? But a young cat like you, like when I was young, I would have knew. Like, yeah, that I see how that went down. But how does I mean? You get all this money, and you thinking it's gonna make it to where you not gonna be in all this. You gonna move different. I I was talking to my, I had a I interviewed a guy this uh, what was it, about a week ago when mm-hmm. we was in Texas, and it was like he told me he's like, man, if I'd have been there, a young dolphin still be alive today because he he straight. That's all he's he do is security. security. Mm-hmm. He like if he just hired me that day when they got out that car they'd have never made it out that car you know so yeah and, and he had the money to do so and when i look at people like kodak black and and what he just went through where is the where, i mean Security. these people got money man you know what well, i'm saying gotta, well you gotta look at it. like there's like bro nobody wants to be with the police because even though the security like you got securities out there like that, that is not police that it ain't not police right. but what people don't understand that hip-hop police shit is real you feel me okay. them motherfuckers will be like me and be like, hey, I'll be your security guard. Who it is? And watch every move. That's like with 6ix9ine. Oh, so they don't turn you in? They will turn you in for sure. They like to watch shit. That's why niggas stay with their own people because you can't trust people. And especially in this generation right now, like, every, snitching is cool. That shit out. You feel me? So you really got to watch out. And like Lil Baby said, bro, like, all that rap money. It's fake, you feel me? Because you gotta, you're not really getting that much. You got people to pay after every show, after right. this, managing this, that, that. And the only real money you're gonna get is invested, you feel me? So, like, that shit. No, so I they get use, it. They, so that they makes use, sense. So their security is really their partners. They bring their partners to watch their back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but them bro, street niggas gonna start something too, you, man. Like, bro, like, you know, I don't like speaking a lot of shit, but like, mm-hmm. Dolph, for example. Yeah, Dolph. Me, like, hey, R.P. Dolph. Like, if he has security, security, you feel me? But he do a lot of street shit, you feel mm-hmm. me? I get it's it. a lot of drugs. and this It's and all that. kind of stuff mixed up in yeah. what's going on. So, imagine just bringing somebody that you don't know yeah. into that motherfucker, and they like, oh, yeah, we got him. 
Yeah, because yeah. you, you don't know who you bring. If you don't bring yeah. in the right somebody, if you don't know them, you just hire somebody. You don't know if they're attached to something that could pretty yeah. much incriminate you. Yeah. I see and what everybody like to rob these days. So yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. like that's just not that's it. real. Yeah, that's real shit. And your back, your own homies will kill you. I keep my circle small. I you feel me? I stay with my little few people. You feel me? But when a nigga got to go out on the street, then that's when niggas like out the outside because like. Shit's cracking. Well, now I look at you. You got the tattoos in your face. You you got the Earl chain on the kid Earl yeah. chain. Niggas gonna be watching you. you are, I mean, when you move on the internet, no matter how niggas see you, they like, oh, there he is right there. You know what I'm saying? So you kind of shine a light on yourself whenever you are in a battle. Yeah. You know what's crazy too? I be like, damn, bro. I'm I'm, a, I'm not I'm not gonna say I'm a savage, but I be like, I'm low key a savage because there's a lot of shit going on and a lot of artists is dying. But sometimes I do move by myself. I'm just like, because it is, it's just be it's crazy. crazy. It's crazy. I'm like, damn, because I am a target. A lot yeah. of people do try to snatch my chain, but just don't get the chance. Like, you feel me? When I was like that, my brothers even told me, like, bro, we had a DP a nigga because a nigga tried to snatch your chain. You feel me? They went go perform and the nigga reached for it and yanked on it. Because it's your chain. Yeah, like nigga, bro, it'd be crazy. So young niggas, but young you gotta change up your movements. You not yeah. drive the same car, not go to the same nah, place. Hey, like same, you nah, know, I'm on my that. Jeff Bezos shit. I'm gonna keep that one hundred, bro. Cause man, I'm what like I'm really watched by the police just because I've been through some shit and they think I did some crazy shit. So like I won't drive a fancy car. Mm-hmm. I won't drive my Maserati or nothing like that. Like I don't even want to get none of my G wagons sent out here, none of my Lambs, none of that out here from Florida because if I come out here, the police see that shit. I'm just like they a gonna big watch you. Oh yeah, they're gonna watch me, bro. I like Jeff. I watched the video of Jeff Bezos like last week, two weeks ago, and he was driving a Honda. <laughs> he was like the nigga picked him up. He was like, bro, yeah. I have one question because this is the person that's interviewing him. He's like, bro, I have one question. Why are you driving a Honda? He was like, bro, it's a good car. And then on top of that, it's low profile. Because now I could drive anywhere I want without nobody being like, ah, that's that. Jeff Bezos. Like, or like Lil Uzi. Lil Uzi cars are all the same. You see Lil Uzi car down the street? You're going to follow that motherfucker. You're going to be like, but that's Uzi. Mm -hmm. They know exactly who it is. They know exactly who But let me tell you something. This is one thing I've always learned. Even like when you look at doctors or, you know, people with money. I've always heard, like, I know a couple of doctors that they drive those regular cars. They're they're regular won't, they, they have their nice cars at home. Don't get me twisted. They take that out when they're going out dressed yeah. up and whatever. But to go to work on an everyday basis, they drive just a little old regular car because sometimes you have some people out there who will target nice cars yeah. to whether bump them or whatever because they think they're going to get paid. That's different things. So... Certain people who have money, they know how to work it. But then you have some people who just want to floss. Yeah. Who don't mm-hmm. care about it because they're like, you know, they think they're bigger and better than everybody else. Like, test me, try me. Yeah, bro. That is, that, that, that's one thing I got to say for the youngsters that test me, that try me shit. That shit is not it, bro. Like, niggas be like, motherfucking, like, niggas be like, just like, whatever. My bad, I be motherfucking high as shit. I be forgetting sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you, like, do, where do you want to see yourself in, like, say, a year from now, what do, what do oh, you want to what do you want to see yourself when you you feel to get off this monitor? Yeah, you're not gonna be honest. So so so, <laughs> so where do you want to see your career? Shit, you know, I'm about to take over. That's all I know. Like, bro, I've talked to labels. Even though I be at home, like I talk to labels, and labels is ready. They already ready. They be like, they be telling me like, oh, bro, give me a thousand dollars to do this, and I'll do this. But they've been doing it for free lately. Playing my music in the office, little pumps, people playing my music in the office. You feel me? Interscope, all that. Like, so it's been crazy. I'd be like, damn, nigga, they fuck with me. So you and Lil so, Pump, do you have you ever talked with that guy? Nah. Just your 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 uh main thing is 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 extension. You that's your that's your guy, that's your that's who you rock with. Well when he my, was living, of course. Well, my main thing right now is just, you know, try to make it, try to survive. Because mm-hmm. being independent is like being out here right now. Niggas is dying everywhere. Everywhere. Every, everything. The only thing in the pen is like you can't go nowhere. Mm-hmm. No weapons. You getting stabbed today. So out here. So my my purpose is like you know do my music, take over the music industry, be bigger than a lot of these people. And you know I wish I could say a lot of things, but I have done interviews that is not coming out because my niggas be like, bro. Why would you say that shit? Don't say that shit. No. Hey, don't don't drop that shit because you say that shit. So no, I no, no, no. I get it. I be trying to 
watch myself. That's you're supposed to. As you should, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because everything's not to be spoke on, especially yeah, things that are up and forth coming, and you don't want to you don't want to let things out the bag sometime too quickly, or you don't want to speak on something that might put somebody else in a situation. Just don't want to speak on something that's going to put yourself in a worse situation. That's an easy way for people not to fuck with you in this world. Like, you could say one thing, and niggas be like, oh, bro. He said that shit. Now nobody's gonna fuck mm-hmm. with you. You feel me? So yeah. I'd be like, damn, it's nice. You gotta keep some of that shit to yourself because it's just, it's just what it is. Because everything is quick to go on social media in a heartbeat. Yeah. Oh Everybody's recording. And the way how societies, and this is so terrible, you can say one thing and mean it in a certain way, but everybody will twist it twist just it. for clout, mm-hmm. just to make it sound another, especially a lot of some of the bloggers or there's some people who wanna Ooh, come up vice. off of. Vices, you know what them. I mean? That's so. I'm scared because they did my brother. They did my brother wrong, wrong. You feel me? They did my brother wrong, D man. You feel me? Like he did not say none of that. They cut his shit to the max to the point where it made him sound like a dick. Like oh, he is like they made him sound fucked up to the point where a lot of people stop fucking with him. So what's your next project that you are coming out with? Because it seems like you be working so hard and you always having things coming out back to back to back. What do you have coming out next? And when is it dropping? Um, I have some shit coming. Um, I have so many songs. I have probably I only been out six months. I probably got over like eighteen hundred two two thousand songs. Um, right now I'm just trying to figure out what to do and what am I going to do next. Instead of dropping an album or something like that, just drop like probably a little mixtape. Mix okay. You feel me? Like, cause I feel like. It's like I'm against a lot of people, so it'd probably be like Earl against the world or like me versus me. You feel me? Earl versus Deontay type shit. Is there something in your catalog that you haven't released yet that you know is going to be a hit? Oh, yeah. If y'all want to hear that motherfucker, I got that motherfucker. Ah, that shit what's the me. name of that song? Show Me. Show and, Me. And that's the ones I send to the labels, and the labels be Fucking with it, they be like, yeah, they be they like, love bro, it. they love it, they love it, and I'll be like, me. and I be like, damn, and to the point where like it's not even dropped yet, and they know that, I be like, damn, I hope they don't give that shit to nobody because they give that shit to some somebody. They no, gonna, they're gonna they die. <laughs> they're gonna fucking See die. <laughs> if I catch anybody with my lyrics, yeah. It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. You feel me? It's only one person that that's allowed. He only did it once. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And I can't allow it no more. But if you do it again, just know I know for a fact. Oh, you can't speak on that person who did it. I, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I can Cause bro He is one of my favorite Favorite artists Of all motherfucking time Like Bro Yeah So I wish I could So if you could work with somebody In the future um, Who would you want to work with Oh yeah Lil Uzi That boy like Lil Uzi Uzi. Lil Uzi motherfucking back Okay so if you like him so much Give me your top three Top three artists of all time time. Dead or alive alive. Any genre Anybody I Um I'm gonna say X you feel me? X number, number one. X number one. Biggest impact when he died, all that. You feel me? Number um, two. Uzi. Okay. Uzi number two. Number and, three. And Thug. Thug. You like Thug like yeah, that? I fuck with Thug. Like, Thug is lit. Like, bro, <laughs> I promise you, like, when I first heard that um, Uzi song and Thug song, what is it called? Um, I think it's Big Racks. Yeah. Uzi was in the video. That's yeah. when I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. Now I'm really about to start doing music. I was like, really? Uzi really turned me up. I that nigga like Uzi Vert. I was turning it so up. So I, I seen Uzi on that Amigo song, that one when he first came out oh, hard. Oh, man. Yeah, man. I was like, this dude, who's this dude, man? Yeah, that's the crazy part. Look, now, now I'm like, they got a hint. Like, who took my... <laughs> Nah, that's dope, man. Like, yeah. the thing is, man, you know, it, the thing I can say is that we've seen a lot of artists that, um, you know, because they be like the the one who hadn't made it yet, the bigger artists will see something they got yeah. and they'll use, use it. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, it happens, bro. And at the end of the day, ain't nothing you can say about it because you ain't you ain't got nothing to show that you they the big brand, labels, right? Labels do that too. Labels will like hear you come in and they'll sign you and know that you're very talented and they love your music, but they'll show you because they're really working on oh, somebody most, else to push them up. Most definitely. And I think that's so... That's, that shit is ignorant as fuck. And but that's, they do it. I told every manager that came at me, if you're gonna fuck with me, drop every motherfucking artist you got. I don't give a fuck if he's your hottest artist or not. 
I'm not that nigga. So you want a manager that's independently, strictly for you? For me, I don't want nobody else because, bro, like, do you have that? Uh no, because so you're looking for a manager. I'm looking for a manager because I be doing a lot. Like you feel me? Like I could do a lot by myself, Mm -hmm. especially like managing. Some managers be out there just to get your fucking sauce. So Mm -hmm. I be like, bro, like I have this one manager. He owns me for like life. You feel me? But see, he has my Instagram name. My Insta- my my artist name is K I D E A R L, not K I D D E A R L. I see that. Mm-hmm. So I do shit different. Like when I sign papers, I put my artist name, but I put the two D's because guess what? Y'all can take that shit. That's not my <laughs> shit. You yeah, feel me? Yeah, no, I get it. Like it's some shit. I can you got to be smart about how yeah. you move because yeah, somebody will try to get you. Yeah, my boy wasn't. Um, all right, so I picked up my manager. This was like 2019. I picked up my manager with in LA. I was with my brothers and shit. They went inside, you feel me, you go get some like backwoods and shit so we could roll up a smoke. So my manager stayed in the car with me and he's arguing with me like, bro, just yelling at me like, bro, I fucking own you. Anything you fucking mm. do, you can't do without me. And I'm like, bro, but it's like I'm in a fucked up situation. That's my manager. I signed papers to Sign this nigga. Paper. So you feel me? Whatever this nigga is saying, like I could be, if I try to do something, I can get fucked up. You feel me? And so, you can't find no loopholes? I found a loophole. Okay. I gave him my my Instagram name. Yeah, <laughs> you know me? So my brother, my brother came in the car, was like, was looking at me and was like, bro, like, he is ready to put a strap out. Like, nigga, like, no man should never tell you that he owns you. Yeah. And my brothers don't like that shit. And my my brothers like they will go fucking crazy. So I had to come, like be like, nah, bro, chill out. I gotta ask you this. Uh because you hadn't mentioned Drake or nothing, but everybody in the South would be seeing mention Drake. Like they'd be like, "I do, a, I, I want to sign, I want with Drake." Mm-hmm. You hadn't mentioned him. How do you feel about Drake and that whole movement with OVO? Man, well, you know, um, respect it. You okay. feel me? Always will. You feel me? Talented artist. I fuck with him. You feel me? Nothing against me. You feel me? Is the styles different? Because you you guys are the younger generation, right? I mean, he's still he's still like doing his thing. That he's still that nigga. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but y'all are the younger generation. Y'all yeah. not like like when we my era, you know, it was a younger generation, then a younger generation. Mm-hmm. But you guys are the next up, right? Next up, that Drake is signing niggas like us. You yeah, me? yeah. Signing niggas like us. And that's dope, man. So, um, man, hey, man, we love you, bro. We appreciate you, man. I always put God first, no matter what. Oh, I don't care. Listen, I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what situation you in. I don't care what people say. You are always connected to God, young brother. Yeah, so don't facts. don't don't even play with that part. Stay focused oh, yeah, enough to you. do what you do. But know that God loves you, bro. I love your energy. Don't let nobody dim your oh, yeah. light. No cap, you did. Because you got yeah. some. You got energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah, yeah. I'm just you, a lit ass person. I, I wish I could tell the story about trip. But I'm like, ah! <laughs> hey, but we about to, we about to get you. Uh, actually, once that money to come out, we can bring you down. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna frequent you on my show. Because imagine Texas. seeing him perform on stage. Oh yeah, yeah. He gonna go <laughs> Wait, in. Wait, where man. y'all at? Uh, in, Texas? We're in Texas, Texas, yeah, in Dallas. Mm-hmm. Okay, but I got that, you, man. Right, that's where South by the Southwest. Yes, sir. Yeah. They about to have uh-huh. it. It's coming up. You can't come and though. You can't come. Hey, look. My lawyer. <laughs> my lawyer from Texas, right? That's the thing. Like, bro, I spent, I had three lawyers. I spent over three hundred thousand dollars in lawyers. He from Texas, but he about to, he said he about he to trying to get you in there. He about to get this case dismissed. Man, I beat the case three times. That's the crazy wow. part. But he about to get this shit dismissed. So hopefully, by this, hopefully next week I'll be off because South by Southwest it's is coming March, up in March, right? It's coming up. It's coming up, man. Say, man, thank you so much, man. Yes, for, sir. Hey, man, uh, listen, man, how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to look out, you know, trying get to reach out to you? Get a feature or Get a feature or something like yes, that. Yes, sir. So, y'all, my Instagram is Kidderl, K-I-D-D-E-A-R-L. You feel me? Um, booking information in my bio. You feel me? Uh, dropping new music soon. We about to turn up. Oh, and I just dropped uh, No Cap featuring Mozzie. You feel me? From Gangland. It's lit. You did say, hey, say, man, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the boss is talk. Boss Talk, you and did. we out. <laughs>